Hello gamers, welcome back to the On The Sticks podcast, your ultimate destination for all things gaming. I'm your host, Sticks, and I'm excited to have you join me on this gaming journey today. But before we jump into today's gaming goodness, I just want to say a huge thank you for the amazing response to our first episode. Your support means everything, and I can't wait to keep this journey going. Remember, this podcast isn't just about me. It's also about all of us gamers coming together to share our love for the world of gaming. Here at On The Sticks, we're all about keeping you in the loop so you can maximize your time on the sticks. Whether you're a console aficionado, a PC Master Race member, or someone in between. This podcast is your hub for gaming news, discussions, and community engagement. Remember, your thoughts and ideas matter to us here at On The Sticks, so be sure to send in your topics and questions for future episodes. Today, we got an action-packed episode lined up covering everything from the latest Nintendo Switch 2 rumors, that GTA 5 DLC we never got, and an unexpected resurgence of floppy disk in 2024. So without further ado, let's dive in today's episode. This is the On The Sticks podcast. First up, fans of the classic Max Payne series have reason to rejoice as Remedy announced that a long-awaited Max Payne 1 and 2 remake is set to enter for production in the second quarter of 2024. I kind of remember Max Payne 1 being, <laughs> being an interesting game back in the day. I don't really remember 2, then I remember 3, but 2? Two, 2 is definitely a game I do not remember much, but I do remember the homies playing Max Payne 1 a good bit. I don't think we ever got far in it though. Pretty much just got to the point of being able to get into using the bullet time and getting some different guns and having Max take all the painkillers. Never really got too deep into the game. So it is interesting to see that the games are getting remade. I'm sure people are going to love them because I feel like folks do miss the Max Payne series. We just haven't had a game in the series in a minute. I think three was the last one on PS3, if I'm not mistaken. And we have not seen anything from it since. But that's not all. Remedy also provided insights into the development progress of Control 2, a very loved game from a lot of a lot of gamers out there. Shout out to Control. We streamed it briefly over on, on the Sticks Twitch channel. Can't remember if we threw them up on the YouTube channel or not, but yeah, we were streaming it. CEO Taro Vertala shared that Control 2 team has been diligently finalizing the proof of concept stage, ensuring that the game's world mechanics and visual targets are top-notch with controls, immersive storytelling, and innovative gameplay. Fans are eagerly awaiting this sequel's production readiness. Not surprised Control 2 is getting a sequel. I'm pretty sure we've been through that. I'm surprised that it's not further along at this point, because I feel like Control came out a while ago, if I'm not mistaken. I would have assumed it was ahead of this right here, but we said before Remedy has been working on other things like the Max Payne stuff. And as we go down below, you guys will see that there are other things in works from Remedy too. They've been very busy. For those craving more from the Control universe, Remedy revealed that Codename Condor, a new game set in the Control franchise, is currently in full production, preparing for another thrilling adventure into the mysterious supernatural world that Remedy has expertly crafted. See, they got a lot of stuff in the works. Hopefully, Codename Condor will be as good as Control and the people will enjoy it. I don't think we've seen anything from what that title may be. There might have been some hints at it in Control. Like I said, I didn't get too far in Control. So if you play Control and you have any idea what Codename Condor might be based on something you've seen in the game, let me know down below in the comments. But that's not all. Once again, for Remedy. They have something in the works called Project Kestrel, which is still in the concept stage after a reboot from its initial free-to-play format in 2013. Remedy is undoubtedly cooking up something intriguing for this title. So another project in the works. It was free-to-play, but they started over, so it's probably not going to be free-to-play anymore since it was rebooted in its initial stage, but who knows, it still could be a free-to-play title. My guess is once it got rebooted, that might have been one of the reasons why I got rebooted because I didn't want it to be free to play from how the concept was developing and they prefer it to be a premium premium title. Whether or not it's a full $60 game, we just have to wait and see. By the time it come out, games might be even more than $70, $60, $70, or they could be cheaper. You never know. A lot of eyes on Bungie as they gear up for this final DLC for Destiny 2. Not only are people wondering how the DLC is going to play out. I know a lot of people are excited about it. Some other things that have been going on recently, 
I think they unsunset like the old guns, if I'm not mistaken, or something like that. Brought back a lot of old weapons, made them viable again. Or some people are saying ain't no point in having the old weapons because we're about to get a bunch of new stuff with the new content that's coming. But other than that, there are some talks about what Bungie could have in store after Destiny 2. A lot of people are hoping it is Destiny 3. You know, hopefully third third time is the charm for Destiny. I really love Destiny 1. Wanted to get into Destiny 2, but I had less time to play Destiny 2 than I did Destiny 1. When I got Destiny 1 was when I first got my PS4, the white bundle. And I think that was like the only game I had other than maybe Madden. I think I had Madden, Destiny, and probably had 2K at some point. I think that was like the only games I had on my PS4 when I first got it. So played the hell out of Destiny 1. Loved it. Loved every minute of it. Destiny 2 came. I think I got it. They came out. But I just did not have the same amount of time to put into it as I did Destiny 1. And never really got around to getting into it. And by the time I did have the time to play it, I just felt like it was just too much stuff to do. <laughs> which is a good and a bad thing to have to worry about. Just too much to do. Kind of didn't really know where to jump in at the start to get going in Destiny 2 because it was just so much that had been added to the game at that point. So I'm really hoping Destiny 3 is a thing and I'm able to jump in at the beginning and it brings back the memories of playing Destiny 1. And hopefully we don't have to go through the same cycle that we normally go through with Destiny of it being okay, then they build it up to good, then they do something different and they have to start all over to build it back up to being good again. Hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully we get into Destiny 3 and it's just good to go. Let me know down below in the comments. How do you guys feel like, feel about Bungie doing Destiny 3 and what are your hopes for that? Do you want them to do Destiny 3 or do you just want them to move on to something else? Resident Evil fans, brace yourself because according to a trusted Resident Evil insider, Resident Evil 9 is rumored to be lurking on the horizon with a claimed launch date set for January 2025. Dusk Golem, the reputable source behind these whispers, suggests that the game has been in development for the past seven years. While the January 2025 release date is the target, as with any venture into the realm of game development, nothing is set in stone. Resident Evil remains shrouded in mystery with details scarce and speculation running rampant. But if history is any indication, we're in for a terrifyingly thrilling ride. After the success of the Resident Evil 4 remake, which sent shivers down our spines and sold over 3 million units in the first two days alone, anticipation for the next chapter in the saga is at an all-time high. With over 154 million copies sold since inception in 1996, Resident Evil has become synonymous with survival horror excellence. And if rumors are to be believed, Resident Evil 9 is poised to uphold that legacy and deliver an experience that will haunt us for years to come. So what do you guys think? You know, Capcom has been on the roll with their releases. So if Resident Evil 9 is coming out in the next year or so, I expect it to be pretty good. Especially, well, yeah, yeah, I, I would expect it to be pretty good with the success they are having, the role they are on with their releases. They have a lot of goodwill with their fans. They seem to know what they are doing at this point with their games. They know how to make a game that's fun for their fans. So I'm expecting Resident Evil 9 to be a continuation of that success they are having. I am interested to see how the, the game will be though. As somebody who doesn't really dabble in the Resident Evil games, I do enjoy the movies. I haven't seen the, the last movie they put out, but I do enjoy the, the movies for what they were. I know a lot of people don't really like them, but I enjoy just watching them. It's just something to watch. And I do enjoy watching people play the games. I'm just not a fan of playing them myself because I don't play scary games. <laughs> I do not play them, but I'm interested to see what Resident Evil 9 is. I will most likely watch somebody play it, whoever playing it. I want to see what kind of gameplay they're going for. Will it be like an open world? Will it be a more linear experience? Things like that. Curious to see. Hopefully we will get more info on that. If my guess, we will see something in the next couple of months, whether it's from... A showcase in the summer the one jeff Keighley does or if they're going to team up with one of the the big game companies to do one with or i do think capcom normally does their own presentation <laughs> if i'm not mistaken the last one they did or one of the last ones they did they didn't really show anything but i do think they typically do have their own presentation i think we got 
that's why we got our first look at the the Pragmata game that seems to have disappeared <laughs> recently. So my guess is we're going to start to get some Resident Evil 9 news soon. If it is true that it's getting ready to release this upcoming January, we'll definitely get some information on that soon. Because I doubt that would just be something they throw upon us without any kind of showings beforehand. So let me know down in the comments. Are you ready to again brave the terrors that await in the world of Resident Evil? Power World fans, we had some thrilling news straight from the ID Xbox showcase. A brand new PAL world update is on the horizon, set to introduce a new lineup of adorable PALs right into the game this summer. In the recent reveal trailer, we caught a glimpse of the four new PALs making their debut into the world. These delightful creatures are set to expand your gaming experience as you embark on new adventures and capture them to join your team. With PAL world's previous success skyrocketing to staggering 25 million players in just one month, it's no surprise that fans are eagerly anticipating this exciting update. And let's not forget about the highly anticipated arena mode aptly named Power World Arena, which is also slated to arrive later this year. Unfortunately, there is still no official release date for this update. So gamers, the question remains, will you be diving back into the vibrant world of Power World to discover these new pals and expand your base? We'd love to hear your thoughts. My experience with Power World was pretty fun. That's a game I had interest in for the first, from the first time I seen it revealed in a trailer. I can't remember a couple of years ago, if I'm not mistaken. And of course my reaction was the same as everybody else's Pokemon with guns. <laughs> That's the first thing I thought, but as playing it, it's a little more than Pokemon with guns. Cause one, it takes you a while to get guns for your pals. It takes, it takes a while, but two, it's really just a survival crafting game, you know? And I don't feel like it was really emphasized as such when it was being shown off. It was more just about the the hype and the shock value of using your pals and having guns and doing all this, that bunch of crazy stuff. And I think probably a lot of people that jumped into the game didn't realize that, but people do enjoy these types of games. I would say you have to have the attention span for these types of games because it is very repetitive grinding out these supplies and materials you need to craft the things you need to get to this next level and go out and explore and make sure you keep up with food and drink and hot cold <laughs> all those types of things and then catching really the catching of the pals is probably what a lot of people want to just go in and just do but then they realize they have to worry about these other things as well and i wouldn't be surprised if that's what caused a lot of folks to you know bounce out of the game early or quicker than they thought they would initially just because they don't want to have to deal with the survival mechanics because a lot of folks were looking at this as a alternate to playing pokemon you know pokemon game you don't have to worry about no food and thirst and all that but who's to say that wouldn't be fun in a pokemon game you know that could be what pokemon need to spice up their gameplay so this leads us into our first hot take we had somebody write in over on instagram so if you go over to our instagram account on the sticks we had a comment left for a hot take so let's dive into this my hot take is the pokemon series has always been good it has only gotten better over time people who are blinded by nostalgia need to stop complaining because they're going to buy the game anyway you know i agree with this because i feel like most of the people that complain about pokemon probably still buy the game anyway you know me i complain about pokemon and I stopped buying it. I didn't stop buying it completely. It's a couple of games in this series I still bought. But for the most part, once I felt like the games weren't getting any better or weren't really fun to me anymore, I stopped buying them. Wasn't no point in me spending my money on them. Folks really want to see changes in the Pokemon series. I would suggest stop buying the game. You know, <laughs> you can't complain about the game and still buy it. You can't do that. Nothing's going to change. Hopefully with them seeing power, the success that Power had, they will make some changes to the game. Hopefully we see some different things in this series that try to spice up the gameplay or some new mechanics, anything, anything, you know, or we could just be at the point of nothing really changing in the Pokemon series. I don't know. I don't know what Nintendo could do at this point to get me back interested in Pokemon. At this point, I'm probably better off just playing the older games and being content with that i just don't see the newer games doing it for me anymore 
Let me know down in the comments how you guys feel about this hot take. And what do you think Nintendo needs to do to spice up the Pokemon series? This next story is crazy. Now, we all know Trevor from GTA 5, right? The lovable, albeit slightly unhinged character who always keeps us on our toes. Well, it turns out there are some big plans for Trevor we never quite got. Well, it turns out there were some big plans for Trevor that never quite made it into the game. According to a recent interview with Stephen Ogg, the voice actor behind Trevor, Rockstar had some ambitious ideas for DSC Center around everyone's favorite psychopath. Hey, could have been fire. I already know. Picture this. Trevor, the federal agent. Yes, you heard that right. Rockstar had plans for an expansion where Trevor would go undercover as a secret agent, a sort of James Bond-esque adventure. Now, the thought of Trevor attempting to play the part of a suave secret agent is downright hilarious. And it's a shame we never got to see it come to fruition. But wait, it gets even better. The DLC tentatively titled Agent Trevor was rumored to feature all sorts of over-the-top gadgets and set pieces reminiscent of classic Bond films. <laughs> see, man, this could have been fire. Rockstar always messing something up. However, despite shooting some scenes for the expansion, it seems Rockstar ultimately decided to scrap the idea, leaving us to wonder, what could have been? Could have been fire. That's what could have been. Hey, Rockstar. It's a shame we'll never get to see Trevor donning a tuxedo, sipping martinis, and causing chaos in true Bond fashion. But hey, at least we have some great memories of Trevor's antics in the main game, right? You know, that's crazy. And I think some more in the story, they talked about how the DLC plans for GTA 5 originally was supposed to be like each character get their own expansion. I thought that was supposed to, that would have been pretty cool. They said that would have been sort of like the DLC that was for GTA 4, the Lost in the Dam and the Ballad of Gay Tony. So those DLCs are pretty good. I feel like if Trevor Michael and Franklin got DLCs like those, Man, it would have been fire. I definitely would have. I would have paid money for those if it was of the same quality and of the same nature of those DLCs. Because I played the GTA 4 DLCs, I want to say, not too long ago. Really, a few years ago. Definitely didn't play them when they first came out. I don't think I had ever heard of them when they first came out. I had went back and streamed the old GTAs on Twitch. And after I beat 4, I checked out the DLCs, and those were great. So if we could have got something like that in GTA 5, I would have loved it. And I think most people were hoping for a DLC for GTA 5. We got it, just not the DLC we wanted. We wanted single player DLC. All we got was multiplayer DLC, <laughs> which was fine. You know, shout out to them for, I want to say figuring out GTA Online, but I still don't feel like it's figured out all the way. <laughs> you know, but GTA 5 Online mode was a fun time with the friends. The slight time I spent on, I really didn't spend that much time in GTA Online. Like I said, I was hoping for the single player D DLC. I don't think I ever beat the main game because I was hoping for DLC to come. And I was like, oh, when the DLC get ready to come out, I'm gonna go back and beat the main story. Never got that DLC. I never went back to beat the main story. <laughs> but like I said, I would have loved it. Let me know down below in the comments if you guys would have loved some DLC in the single player side of the game for GTA 5, let me know down below in the comments. I know some people didn't really care for GTA 5 in general. It just wasn't their cup of tea compared to GTA 4 or San Andreas or even Vice City. Some people just weren't with it. And to piggyback off that, you know the world is thirsty for anything about GTA 6. So according to a recent survey conducted by Statista and YouGov, a staggering 49% of UK gamers either won't or aren't sure they'll be snagging GTA 6 when it hits shelves in 2025. Yeah, you heard it right. Nearly half of the respondents aren't feeling the hype. That's crazy. Now, let's crunch some of the numbers. In a country where gaming is practically a way of life, with around 50% of the population identifying as gamers, that translates as roughly 19.5 million gamers in the UK giving GTA 6 the cold shoulder. That's a healthy chunk of the gaming community. And y'all not rocking with GTA 6 like that? Crazy. But this survey was conducted just weeks before the GTA 6 reveal trailer hit the scene like a media. You know, the one that shattered the YouTube records and sent shockwaves through the gaming universe. That one. 
So the burning question remains, has the hype train game steamed since then? Are you among the 49% who are hesitant? Or are you firmly in the camp of eager fans waiting to jump into the chaotic world of GTA 6? I'm definitely in the camp of people ready to jump in day one, ready to go, can't wait. I know a lot of people are like, nah, I gotta wait to see what it's actually gonna be like, or they're just gonna say they ain't gonna play it, or they're not feeling it. I ain't even gonna play like that. I already know, as soon as it come out, I'm getting it. Hopefully we do get it next year. I wish we was getting it this year. We might not even get it next year. It might get pushed back, who knows. If they need to push it back, I'm cool with that. You know, take all the time you need with GTA 6. I need it to be great when it come out. You know, I don't need any kind of mishaps, but I'm very looking forward to GTA 6. Can't wait. Firmly, firmly ready for it. Let me know down in the comments below. Are you eager for GTA 6 or are you still on the fence about it? You know, or I think these people on the survey line, ain't no way that many people are unsure about GTA 6. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Let me know what y'all think. Hey there, wonderful listeners. Before we dive back into today's episode, I want to take a moment to express my heartfelt gratitude to the amazing supporters that make this podcast possible. To all the incredible patrons of On The Sticks, thank you from the bottom of my heart for sponsoring today's episode. Your generosity and support means the world to me. And I'm truly honored to have you as a part of my community. It's because of you we are able to continue producing quality content fostering a vibrant gaming community where every player feels welcome and valued. Together, we're building something special and I'm grateful to have you by my side for this journey. As a token of my appreciation, I want to invite you to join our Patreon family if you haven't already. By becoming a patron of On The Sticks, you'll not only gain access to exclusive perks and behind the scene content, but also play an active role in shaping the future of the podcast in our community. So. To all our patrons, old and new, thank you for your unwavering support. You truly make a difference. And I'm excited to continue this adventure with you. If you're interested in joining our Patreon community and become a part of something special, head over to www.patreon.com backslash on the sticks to learn, learn more and sign up today. Thank you once again for your support. Now, let's get back to the podcast. Fallout has been making waves lately, but it's been a bit of a roller coaster ride. On one hand, we've seen the release of the highly anticipated Fallout TV show, which has been met with overwhelmingly positive reception from fans. But on the gaming side, things have been a bit rocky. The recent Fallout 4 next gen update landed in a pretty sorry state, leaving fans disappointed. Yeah, it sucks to hear that the Fallout next gen update hasn't been what people have wanted. I think some folks were thinking it was going to be like the Cyberpunk major update that just changed the game. I don't know where they got that info from, but I don't think it was ever talked up to be that kind of update. So I don't know how they got that that in their heads, but I digress. However, amidst all of this, there's some intriguing news on the horizon. It's been claimed that Xbox is keenly aware of the anticipation surrounding the next Fallout game and is eager to see it arrive sooner rather than later. Currently, it's expected that the next installment, potentially titled Fallout 5, won't hit shelves until 2030s. Woo! With Bethesda Games Studios focused on wrapping up Starfield and The Elder Scrolls 6, the timeline for Fallout 5 seems distant. Distant is an understatement. But according to Jez Gordon, on a recent episode of the Xbox 2 podcast, Xbox is well aware of the demand for a new Fallout title. And considering the recent surge in popularity of the Fallout franchise, it is no surprise that they're looking for ways to expedite its development. One option being considered is to take the development of Fallout 5 away from Bethesda Game Studios entirely. This would mark the first major Fallout game not developed by Bethesda since 2010's Fallout New Vegas. So the big question is, should Xbox seize the opportunity presented by the Fallout TV series and capitalize on the current momentum of the franchise? Phew that's a that's a tricky tricky situation there i'm sure bethesda would love to get the, the fallout game out sooner than later as well based on the hype right now but it's not like they can just drop a game tomorrow for it should xbox give it to somebody else i mean i could see them wanting to do it or why they want to do it or i just don't know if the end product would be worth the risk of giving it to somebody else 
you know, especially with the uh, the way other studios have been producing games for Xbox. They've been pretty hit or miss, mostly misses. You know, shout out to Redfall. They've been mostly misses. So I don't I don't know. I don't know if you can risk risk giving Fallout to another studio, especially when you have this much hype and goodwill behind the Fallout brand right now. I don't I don't think it's worth it. You would think they want to give it to shoot i can't think of their name the people that did fall out new vegas you would think they want to give it to them but i'm pretty sure they're busy with avowed and i want to say they have some other titles they're working on already i don't think they will be able to get it out any sooner than bethesda will be able to i could be wrong i don't know maybe it's a way for them to work together on the next fallout and that get it out sooner or maybe bethesda can just hire more people I don't know. I think it, they just got to find a way to get Bethesda to get it out quicker, more so than just taking it from them, giving it to somebody else. Like I said, that's a big risk. I don't know if I would personally want to risk that, you know, you might be better off just waiting on it or seeing what you can figure out with Bethesda to get the game out sooner. Let me know what you think down below. Do you think they should take it away from Bethesda and roll the dice and give it to somebody else? Or do you think both sides should just wait and it, gets out when it gets out like i said i can see it happening either way but hopefully we do get something new in the fallout franchise i would be surprised if we seen a new fallout game before 2030 i would be very surprised but you never know things happen speaking of bethesda and starfield we did recently get some new info for that title i'm sure most people have forgot we're supposed to get some starfield dlc <laughs> that they sold to us before the game was even out. Shattered Space, the much anticipated expansion for Starfield that's been on everyone's radar since release last September. Todd Howard confirmed that we won't have to wait much longer, folks. Shattered Space is set to hit consoles and PCs in fall 2024. That's right, mark your calendars. Todd Howard hinted that we'll get our first peek at the expansion with a revealing trailer dropping this June. Can you feel the hype building for Starfield once again? Hopefully. This trailer shows us some, something pretty good, something worth getting hype over. But not only are we getting Shattered Space DLC later this year, we're also getting another update to Starfield on May 15th that brings a slew of enhancements and additions that will take your gaming experience to a whole nother level. Some of the things that have been updated are surface maps, let's see, expanded gameplay options, enhanced ship customization, Xbox Series X optimization, but that's not all. The May update also includes a plethora of bug fixes and improvements to ensure a smoother, more polished gameplay experience from general stability enhancements to quest specific tweaks. Bethesda has left no stone unturned in their quest to deliver the best possible version of Starfield to players. So I think if you go to the beta version of Starfield on Steam, right now you can already play with these updates if i'm not mistaken so far i think i've seen people using the uh, the surface maps and the city maps those would have been a big help to when i was playing starfield at lunch for sure i definitely like the updated maps i haven't really seen any of the other updates in action let's see optimization for series x i played on pc ship customization i haven't seen any of that yet other gameplay options i think they have it to where you can change how the dialogue menus pop up in front of the npcs and stuff like that but hey it's good to see them updating the game hopefully going back to the other part of the story the shattered what is it called shattered dreams the shattered dreams shattered space they should call Starfield Shattered Dreams because I'm sure it's shattered a lot of folks' planet dreams. But the Shattered Space DLC, hopefully it is worth some kind of hype. Hopefully it's fun. I don't really know what I want from this DLC because I didn't even finish playing the, the base game. I thought the base game was fine. I didn't have as many problems with it as the rest of the internet with it. You know, a lot of, a lot of uproar about it starfield when it launched and as time went on as more and more people played it and seen what the game was i didn't really have any issues with it but maybe that's because i didn't play a million hours like a lot of people did i just played it here and there when i played it i went at my own pace and did the things i thought were fun on the game i didn't find the base building fun in fallout 4 so i really didn't care too much about 
building things <laughs> in Starfield, like the outposts or whatever. Don't really care about building ships like that. Might mess around with it a little bit. Don't care about that. But for me, I enjoy just exploring, seeing what I can find, fighting enemies, advancing the story, doing different quests. That's what I enjoyed from the game. So it wasn't a terrible game in my opinion. I enjoyed it. So like I said, I'm eager to see the DLC. Whatever it is, it is what it is. May or may not check it out. I can't guarantee it because, like I said, I'm in the very beginning. Of, not, well, probably I'm still in the very beginning of the game. But who knows? Maybe seeing the DLC will get me back into the game. Check out some mods and see whatever else the updates got going for the game and give it another try. But yeah, let me know down below. What do you guys hope for this DLC? Or do you not even care about the DLC at this point? Are you completely done with Starfield? I feel like the DLC will give it new life. Yeah. Not sure if we'll see anything after this DLC, though, because it seems like Bethesda will probably just move on from this game and focus on what Elder Scrolls, something from Fallout. Who knows? I'll be very surprised if we get anything else in the Starfield world after this Shattered Space update. And I think in the little developer video they showed, like they was working on some other stuff, like they seen like land vehicles. We might get some smaller updates or maybe that's in the Shatter Space DLC. Who knows? We just have to wait and see. And then I wouldn't be surprised down the line if those rumors were true about it coming to PlayStation. Once you done did everything you wanted to do to it for PC and PS, PC and Xbox, why not put it on PlayStation and get the hype going all over again, get the player base up again. Who knows? I feel like that's probably the plan. Now, if you're a Kingdom Hearts fan, you're in for a treat. According to reports circulating on social media, Kingdom Hearts 4 is set to be released in 2025. So there you go. Kingdom Hearts and GTA next year. And a Resident Evil. Crazy year next year already. According to rumors, that is, you know, take it with a grain of salt. The news first surfaced via Daniel RPK on Twitter, who shared the claim through his Patreon platform since Square Enix unveiled Kingdom Hearts 4 back in 2022. Fans have been eagerly waiting for more details about the game. It's been relatively quiet on the Kingdom Hearts front, but it's, if this rumor holds true, we can expect the first major trailer for Kingdom Hearts 4 to drop soon. The Summer Games Fest is going down. Everything getting shown. Some major stuff coming up. Summer Games Fest for sure. But wait, there's more. Development on Kingdom Hearts 4 reportedly began as far as back as 2020, indicating that Square Enix has been hard at work on a project for quite some time. Shoot, that's the case. It might really be getting ready to drop. If they've been working on it since 2020, it might be getting ready to drop. So what can we expect from Kingdom Hearts 4? Well, details are still a bit scrappy, but it's believed to be a direct follow-up to 2019's Kingdom Hearts 3. Rumors suggest that the game would delve deeper into the Lost Master story arc, offering a multiverse style of play with multiple worlds to explore. And of course, our beloved protagonist, Sora, will face off against Heartless as he navigates through the adventure. For diehard Kingdom Hearts fans, these details might be incredibly exciting, but for those of us, including me, who haven't de delved into the series yet, it might sound like a foreign language. Nevertheless, it's always thrilling to see new developments in the gaming world, and Kingdom Hearts 4 is shaping up to be no exception. You know, I tried to get into Kingdom Hearts multiple times. I tried to go back and play the first game some years ago, and I just couldn't get into it, but maybe i give it a try again. Maybe it's something I could stream over on Twitch, and that'll help me get through it, because I definitely tried to play it before I was doing YouTube and Twitch and all that stuff. I tried to get into it, couldn't do it. So maybe Twitch can help motivate me get into it. But shoot, I'm happy to see Kingdom Hearts 4 <laughs> in development. Can't wait to see what Kingdom Heart game come after this and what crazy titles they give to them. That's always fun to see. Shout out to the Kingdom Hearts fans. All right, so one of the major things that's really been picking up steam the past couple of days, couple of weeks, is news around the Nintendo Switch 2. You know, originally, I think we were thought to be getting it this year but if i'm not mistaken a couple of months ago reports came out that it got delayed into next year but for all we know it was never supposed to come out this year and it's really supposed to come out next year so who's to say it really got delayed but we're getting all kind of reports about it now according to reports from spanish website vandal the nintendo switch 2 is shaping up to be a game changer the new console is rumored to feature joy cons similar to its predecessor but with a twist 
they'll connect to the screen via magnetic strips. This could mean a whole new level of convenience for gamers, but alas, it comes at the cost of compatibility with the standard Joy-Cons. You know, that's probably true because that's what I expect for Nintendo. You know, for years, they've been making people rebuy the same game over and over. So the new console changing the way the, the Joy-Cons connect to the, the system just so you have to buy the new ones. Sounds like Nintendo to me. So that doesn't surprise me. That's, that's probably true. But wait, there's more. The Brazilian journalist Pedro Henrique Luti Lipe, known for his accurate Nintendo leaks, suggests that the big reveal for the Nintendo Switch 2 is scheduled for June 24th with a release date set for spring 2025. Okay. So, again, Summer Games Fest. A lot of stuff in the works. So we could possibly be seeing what a console from... Some type of console from all three of the the uh, big companies, Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft. It's possible. I wouldn't be surprised if we've seen something from all three of them folks. But the leaks don't stop there. Peripheral Maker, what is that? Mobile Pad has dropped some bombshells about the Nintendo Switch 2's features. The new console is rumored to support backwards compatibility for physical games, meaning you can dust off your old favorites and enjoy them on your shiny new system. Low key surprised, <laughs> very surprised Nintendo let that fly. But I guess it's kind of like the the Game Boy games had the uh, compatibility with each other for a bit, the different cartridges. But which ones didn't work on the odors? Like obviously you can play the original Game Boy games on the uh, Game Boy Color Pocket and Advance and all that. But I don't think you can play the Advance, the Advance cartridge on anything else but the Game Boy Advance. Maybe, maybe SP. You can play it on SP, I think, maybe. I don't know. Let me know down below in the comments. The, the Game Boy games work. Mobile Pad claims that the Switch 2 will support stunning 4K resolution when docked with an impressive 8-inch display boasting 1080p resolution in handheld mode. I really hope <laughs> the Switch has these resolutions. That's really one of the things that's holding Nintendo back through the generations. Their graphics is always behind. Even though they typically make their first party games look pretty good, it still doesn't compete on the graphics level of the PlayStation and the Xbox. To hear this being a rumor, that's good stuff. I hope this is true. But, you know, these are rumors. So, as always, take these with a grain of salt until we get official confirmation. So, hopefully that event happens in, when was it, June, July, whenever over the summer. Hopefully it happens. And they show it to us and all this is true, you know, or at least, at least the graphics. I hope the graphics are true. I don't really care about the backwards compatibility because I don't have any physical Switch games. No, I take that back. I have one physical Switch game still, Yu-Gi-Oh. I have my physical copy of Yu-Gi-Oh still. That's only because I haven't been able to sell it. So like everything else I have for the Switch easily, but nobody want to buy Yu-Gi-Oh for some reason. <laughs> I still got the cards that came with and everything, but yeah. Hopefully we get the reveal and hopefully we get some good news. Let me know down below in the comments. What do you are your hopes for the Nintendo Switch 2? What are your predictions for it? Since we are talking about console reveals, a couple of weeks ago we did get the those specs for the PS5 Pro. And I don't really know how I feel about the PS5 Pro. I don't really know who it's for all the way, you know, but I do know. I'm not going to be one of those people that's going to instantly say I'm not getting it, you know, because I'm most likely going to get it or I'm going to try to get it or at least consider getting it. If if I have the means of getting it, you know, if the money's there, I'm going to get it. And I don't know if that's because I create content, but it's pro probably more so because I create content. You know, if I wasn't a content creator, I probably wouldn't care about getting it when it first drops or anything like that, just like with the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. I didn't really care to have them first day personally, but I wanted to do content with them. So I had to make sure that I got them on the first day, you know, but I know a lot of people are just instantly like, nah, I'm not going to get it when they know they're good and well, they're going to get it. So I don't want to be one of those people, but hopefully it actually upgrades our gaming experience, you know, m makes the experience better, whether it's higher resolution or more frames. Personally, I would prefer it just to increase frame rate on games. I don't really need the resolution to look any better because it pretty much is to the point of it's looking pretty much the same. <laughs> the resolutions are kind of looking the same. For me, I'd rather have a smoother gameplay experience with more frames. The, the jump from going to 30 frames 
per second to 60 was crazy when I got the PS5 Pro because I'm pretty sure not the PS5 Pro but the base PS5 when I got that because I wasn't really gaming on PC yet like that and mostly just playing games on the PS4 or the Xbox or even the retro console so I didn't really know anything about gaming above 30 frames and when people would talk about that I wouldn't really pay no mind but then when I actually experienced it firsthand I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. Why haven't I been playing games like this? So I definitely hope it helps boost the frame rates on all the games that you play on it, but we'll see. Maybe we'll get some info on it this summer. If not, surely before the holidays, because I think they want it out this year. So this holidays, we might be seeing PS5 Pro. I mean, well, it ain't no might. We should be seeing a PS5 Pro. And then whatever Xbox is getting ready to put out too. I wish we were seeing the Switch too this holiday season. But it's looking like we're going to get that next year. You know. But that would have been a crazy a crazy Christmas rush. The PS5 Pro, the Xbox refresh, and the Switch too. That would have been crazy. Well, I'm glad I don't have to worry about buying all three of them at the same time. Because I'm crazy enough to have tried to get all three of them for sure. I would have tried it. But yeah, let me know down below. What are your thoughts on the PS5 Pro? Do you think you're going to get one? Do you think it's going to change anything gaming-wise? Or do you think it's just a waste of money? Low-key, wouldn't it be crazy if we needed this to play GTA 6? <laughs> I feel like that's going to be the draw to it, though. A lot of folks going to feel like, yeah, I need this for GTA 6 to play smoothly. Or to play at its best possible rate or whatever. GTA 6, I wouldn't be surprised if that was some kind somehow tied together to push people to buy the PS5 Pro. But we just have to wait and see. It could be the case. Or it might not be the case. GTA 6 might just burn through all the consoles. And nothing can really play it other than a, a high-end PC. We just have to wait and see. Who knows? Next up, we have some unfortunate news from the developer People Can Fly. If you're not familiar with them, they're behind games like Bulletstorm and Gears of War Judgment. As well as my personal favorite. And if you're a follower on the Twitch channel, you know this. Outriders. <laughs> Shout out to Outriders. <laughs> What a time. They have been hit with a rough patch. After years of anticipation and development, they've decided to pull the plug on their co-op action RPG project, Dagger. Now, this bombshell was dropped on investors in early April, but it's recently been making waves on Twitter thanks to user Morrow in L3. According to reports, the cancellation came as a result of a reanalysis of the development plans. People can fly express dissatisfaction with the game scope and commercial potential. Unfortunately, this decision comes with hefty price tag. The cancellation of Project Dagger is expected to cause a significant drop and people can fly financial results for 2023. We're talking about a decrease around 16.9 million in consolidated financial results and 19.7 million in standalone balance. Dang, that's crazy. Hate to hear that. Definitely hate it because like I said, I enjoyed their last game outrider so much when it came like unreasonable amount of fun it's no reason i should have had as much fun as i did playing that game but i did definitely enjoy playing with the community playing with random people all of that that was probably the most fun i had playing a game like that with other people in a minute i think launch day we streamed or lunch day or the day after we probably streamed for like what nine ten hours straight something like that maybe more it might have been like a 12 13 14 our stream i can't remember it was a crazy stream though that's like the most fun i've had with a game in a long time unfortunately when they came out with the expansion or dlc or the update the last update or whatever i had lost <laughs> i had lost that interest in the game more so probably because i just didn't have folks to play it with like we did when it first came out so it was mostly me just trying to play it by myself but yeah ain't this happen i would have loved to check out this game that they was working on because i enjoyed their last game so much so that would have been enough for me to try it out off rip just from what I've played for them before. Who knows what all this is going to affect for their company. Hopefully they, they can still be a company. That's a lot of money that they're losing off of this. Hopefully they're not hit too hard by it and they can recoup, get it back together. And maybe one day we'll get to see what this game was going to be and they get back to working on it. Or yeah, I was going to say, hopefully they show it so we can at least see what it's like. But part of me don't even want them to show it. If I'm never going to get to play it, especially if it ends up being something I see and be like, oh, man, that, that would have been something I would have loved. But then shout out to people who can fly for Outriders, though. 
I appreciate y'all for that. Now, this story is really crazy. And I thought it was funny how I randomly came across it. So in San Francisco, there is a train line that is still relying on floppy disks in 2024 to boot up their systems and to control things like some important processes are based on floppy disks still working. I couldn't believe it. I can't even tell you the last time I seen a computer that even had a slot for a floppy disk, let alone seen a floppy disk anywhere. I'm sure most people now have never seen a floppy disk in their lives. Don't even know what it is. Couldn't even draw one if they needed to, you know? So I just thought this was crazy that something this important is still using floppy disk. I think the article says something about they were planning on switching their system from the floppy disk to something else, but this was plan before COVID. So once COVID hit, plans got slowed down a lot. So I think at this point, they're still on the floppy disk, and, but still planning on switching to something else. But yeah, that is crazy. I can't imagine <laughs> still needing floppy disk for something in 2024. That is wild. Let me know when the last time you seen a floppy disk somewhere or even seen a computer that could take a floppy disk. Most computers can't even take CDs now. So the have computers that take floppy disks. Yeah, that is crazy. Shout out to San Francisco for that. That is some uh, stuff using floppy disk in 2024. Yikes. People that play football games have been waiting for a new alternative for Madden football for the longest. So when news came out that 2K were able to create new football games, people were ecstatic. Then randomly, when the 2K account, I believe it was the 2K account, tweeted out about their new NFL Playmaker game, everybody was happy until they realized what kind of football game it was, which was a mobile <laughs> card battler. Probably the last kind of game a football game player was looking forward to, you know, after a big emphasis was put on 2K getting the ability to create football games again with NFL players on it. So a mobile card battler probably wasn't what folks had in mind, which is wild. I think one of the aspects that was supposed to have been good about it was this taking what makes the my team mode and the ultimate team mode and all the other quote unquote loot box gambling modes and sports games fun and putting it into this. But I feel like it completely misses the point of what makes my team and ultimate team fun for me, which is actually being able to play the game because <laughs> there is no gameplay in this NFL 2K playmakers. You, from what I'm seeing or what I've seen and read, you legit just get the cards and everything is already predetermined based on the card numbers and stuff like that. Ain't really no, ain't no gameplay, you know? I can't go out there and run a play and actually control the players. You know, you just pick the stuff and they do everything for you. It's like a, what, what is it? Auto battler type game or something like that, which is crazy. It's like, I don't know. I don't know what 2K was thinking with this right here. I don't know who this is targeted at. Oh, well, obviously it's targeted to people that's going to spend money on the cards. I feel like they need to win. But yeah, for me, when I play Ultimate Team and my team and stuff like that, I want to actually play with those players. I don't <laughs> want to just pick a lineup and have it simulate what happens. That's not what makes me want to come back to those modes. That's not what makes me want to really play those game modes at all. I can't believe that they've been working. I hope they haven't been working on this for forever. Because like I said, I think we're supposed to get an NFL 2K football game for like two or three past years now. And they just keep delaying it or going quiet about it and not really saying anything about it. Then out of the blue, this drops with no kind of promo, promo or anything. I think they might have knew that the game was going to be not well received. That's why I just dropped randomly one morning. I think it just dropped one morning randomly. I don't know. That's wild to see. I know after the game released and people were upset about it, there were talks of this not actually being the quote unquote football game 2K has been working on. But I wonder if that's the truth. I wonder if this had came out to great hype and people being happy and saying it's great. But they have still said this wasn't the football game that was working on. I know some people feel like that people should play this to show support and to show there's interest in a 2K football game, but I don't know. 
I don't know. This might make them think, okay, this was a good idea. Let's make more like this. And I feel like this was a terrible use of their resources, honestly. I'd rather them not put anything out if this was they was going to do with their NFL <laughs> license. I still can't believe it, yeah. This completely missed the mark of what an NFL fan, NFL fan wanted in a video game. This, this completely missed the mark, man. I can't believe they did this. So we're still waiting to see what the alleged football game they're working on. Maybe we'll get one when football season rolls around. Maybe this was... <laughs> supposed to be a part of the game and they took it from their their actual game that they're making you know we just have to wait and see they better get it together es you no know, we got ea college football dropping this year you know that's going to apply pressure to madden and any other football game coming out because if this head over here is better than any other football game people are gonna stop playing madden and any other football game just to play college football if they're just looking for a football game to play in general so I'm glad to see college football coming back out. It should make Madden become a better game and should make any other else football game coming out a better game. So we'll see. Dang, we have just reached a, a down, <laughs> the down segment of the podcast, the down block of the podcast with these back to back, to back disappointment stories. So let's keep it rolling with another one. Listeners, we got some unsettling news from the world of gaming. It seems like the future of Watch Dogs series might be hanging by a red. According to a recent tweet by known leaker Jonathan, they claim that the Watch Dogs series is dead and buried. Jeez, now while this is just speculation, it sparked some concern among fans, especially considering the underwhelming performance of Watch Dogs Legion. I think Legion was, yeah, Legion was with like the group of games I got with my PS when I first got it. And it was probably the one I played the least out of, what was it, Watch Dogs Legion, Spider-Man Miles Morales. I'm not mistaken. What else? Godfall. It might have been like one other game too. Yeah, I played Godfall more than I played Watch Dogs Legion, which is crazy. If you play Godfall and kept up with that game, it, it, I might go back and play Godfall, honestly. I kind of had fun with that joint, but I digress. Watch Dogs Legion. I didn't think it was that bad. I think it kind of, the, the hook of the game was you being able to play with anybody you see or recruit anybody you can see. I feel like that was good and bad. The fact that you can get anybody and some of the players, well, some of the people had like special perks that were unique to them and stuff like that. But a lot of people were just like copies of each other. I feel like that hurt it. Not having like a main person to follow in the story. I feel like that was the problem with that system. I would have preferred like a main person that I followed throughout the story and then still be able to recruit anybody I seen to have like on my team to do some missions with, you know, that would have been my preferred way to play. But what do I know? The post also hints at a failure of Legion's come. The post also hints at the failure of Legion's compromisingly compromising a fairly original battle royale. This suggests that the game's shortcomings might have affected broader plans for the series. Dang, a Watchdog Legion battle royale. But y'all think that would have been like what you in the city, and what being like any any person that's walking in the city could be a player, and you not knowing who are the players, and you walk around hacking stuff. Stuff like that, something like that. I could, I could kind of see that kind of taking off, kind of like the prop hunt modes in the in the games and stuff like that. I could, I could kind of see it, unless it was nothing like that and you legit just dropped in a battle royale. Everybody got guns going crazy. That would have been a waste, I think, in my opinion. But yeah, maybe we get to see what the what the game could have been at some point. But let's take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Wow, Watch Dogs Legion might not have lived up to expectations. Ubisoft's AAA games generally do well in terms of sales. The first two games in Watch Dogs series had solid performances with both reaching 10 million copies sold. Even Legion managed to sell 1.9 million digital units in just three days, according to reports, and let's not forget its appearance at the top 20 PlayStation 5 sales in January 2023. However, despite these sales figures, Legion received mixed reviews from the fan base. It seems like the game didn't quite resonate with players in the same way its predecessors did as reflected in a user rating on Metacritic. Yeah, I can see that. I feel like Ubisoft games, numbers tend to be good selling wise, but I feel like people don't always agree with those numbers. You know, a lot of people buy them, but then instantly be like, yeah, I shouldn't have bought this. Oh, this is not what I thought it was going to be. So I can definitely understand that. And I felt like they were on such a good trajectory with the games. 
The first one had its controversies with the downgraded graphics, but I think people still enjoyed it. Uh, the second one, I think people enjoyed that one too, with the different change of setting and the characters and stuff like that. I think people enjoyed that. And then when they showed the third, showing how you can, like I said, take over any, recruit any person you see, it was a good idea in theory. But then once the game got out, it wasn't hitting like they thought it was going to hit. Like I said, I think people like the, the premise of it, but it just wasn't as fun as they hoped it was going to be. With news of a watchdog movie adaptation in the works, it's possible that Ubisoft is still hoping to capitalize on the series' mainstream appeal. But the silence from Ubisoft regarding the future of the game series is concerning. Yeah, so if the movie's still going to be a thing, maybe they're hoping the movie to bring interest back for the games or maybe we'll see a new game around the movie time if i had to choose i would probably i don't know i would probably just go with the movie and hope that that brings interest back into the series because if you go with the game you run the risk of <laughs> it being another flop and then it's hurting the movie as well at least in your current state you have a chance of the movie just doing what the movie gonna do without another game without a second game hurting it, you know? It's already hurt from Legion not doing well. So if you drop another game, the that game might hurt the movie as well. Then the movie really has no chance. At least at this point, the movie has a slight chance, even though we haven't had the greatest track record with video games turned into movies, you know? But maybe Fallout is changing it for everything, <laughs> you know? Maybe the Fallout TV show will bring it some good luck. We'll have to wait and see. As gamers, we can only hope for clarity from Ubisoft soon. Whether the Watch Dogs series will rise from the ashes or remain dead and buried is yet to be seen. All right, we're finally out of the depressing part of the podcast. Now let's get back to some more fun stuff. According to reports from reliable sources like Daniel RPK and Twitter user MBK, Okay, SSTBHC5, who have a solid track record with insider info. Sonic Frontiers 2 is apparently in development and might even be released under a different name. Now, if you're wondering what to expect from this sequel, MBK sheds some light on it saying that the title is a sequel to Frontiers in gameplay style, but the name might change. Frontiers were Rangers until it was announced. For those of you who missed it, the first Sonic Frontiers dropped back in November 2022, hitting platforms like Xbox, PlayStation, PC, and Nintendo Switch. It received mixed reviews depending on the console, but sales-wise, it seemed to do pretty well. Sega announced that Frontiers had sold over 2.5 million copies worldwide by December 2022, and that numbers jumped to 3.5 million units by May 2023. But here's where it gets interesting. Well, if we've got whispers of Sonic Frontiers 2 in the works, Details about its development timeline or potential release date are still murky. It's like trying to navigate through the Green Hill Zone blindfolded. So Sonic fans, are you excited about the prospects of Sonic Frontiers 2? Drop us a comment. Let us know your thoughts. Will it live up to the hype of its predecessors? Only time was tell. So I'm glad to see that they are doing Sonic Frontiers 2. I know it was very, it was a, the first one was a very decisive game. Uh, people wasn't sure what to think about Sonic in an <laughs> open world game, me included. I wasn't sure what to think about how it was going to be, but I feel like they figured it out for the most part. And I'm eager to see what they can do in the second game now that they got the foundation set for how the world should be or how the game should play, stuff like that. Uh, I did not play Sonic Frontiers, but I wouldn't mind giving it a try. It was just something I either didn't have interest in playing or at the time. I was probably trying to play some other stuff, but yeah, I haven't really played a Sonic game since what Sonic Adventure Battle 2. That's probably the last one I really played. So there you go. If you want me to play Sonic Frontiers 2, just put in the child garden. And I'll be all in there. <laughs> That's how you get me to play it. Shoot. I'll buy a standalone child garden game. Honestly, if somebody put one out, I'll buy that guy yeah, my money. Child garden game. But yeah, Sonic Frontiers 2. Looking forward to see it. We'll probably see something about it maybe soon if it's apparently in development already or been in development been in the works i wouldn't be surprised if we got like a little teaser for it or something so we have to wait and see shout out to hell divers 2 the game that just has been a big surprise to a lot of folks this year so far i know it's been the gaming industry's darling for the past couple of months since its release i know recently 
past couple of days it's kind of caught some flat for saying that it's going to require require steam players to get a psn account if they want to keep playing <laughs> hell divers 2 which has caused a lot of backlash a lot of people upset about that and i think they came out to say that arrowhead came out to say that it wasn't their idea <laughs> to do this it was playstation that want this, want this to happen so hey don't be mad at them they basically said be mad at playstation if you want to be mad at somebody but, uh, but outside of that one interesting thing that i've seen pop up in relation to hell divers 2 is the possibility of it coming to xbox i think it was dropped during the rumor mill segment over the xbox era podcast but with like any rumor they were saying take it with a grain of salt it is in very early 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 talks to come to xbox i would love to see hell divers 2 to come to xbox you know we just now seeing xbox send some games to playstation so here go playstation sending some games to xbox this is what we need to happen, you know, especially for games like this, where we need more people in the player base. My thoughts about this is they're probably going to wait a little while longer before bringing it to Xbox. They're probably going to give it some time to run its course a bit more on the PlayStation platform and on PC platforms. And then once they feel like that player base is kind of dipping down or dying out or they need a jolt of energy that's when they're going to start talking about really bringing it on xbox and then once it's on xbox it's going to start the, the hype machine all over again because you got a whole new player base getting into the game and it's just going to bring everybody back to it you know because of course if they bring xbox once they bring xbox in to the platform they're going to add more content you know they're going to see more money they're going to push back into the de development of more things so i hope they do bring this over but <laughs> obviously if the if the PSN requirement made folks mad, it's probably going to make people mad if they have to link their Xbox account to it. Too. They'll have to go through the same discourse again for that. But shout out to Helldivers to keep up the good work. Bring it to every platform. Exciting times to be a Gears of War fan. Liam McIntyre, the talented voice actor behind JD Phoenix in the Gears of War series, recently dropped a hint that's got fans buzzing. In response to a fan's inquiry on Twitter, McIntyre hinted that we might hear about the next game in the series as soon as June, which would line up with everything else we're hearing about the Xbox event coming up June 9th. Reports from insiders and journalists have been adding fuel to the fire. Many are speculating that Xbox will unveil the next Gears of War game during this year's Xbox showcase, scheduled for June 9th. Tom Warren from The Verge and Jeff Grubb from Giant Bum are among those that have hinted at this excited possibility and according to insider shinobi 602 people aren't ready for what is in store now what exactly will xbox reveal that's still a mystery some rumors suggest that the game might be a ways off from release which wouldn't be surprising so we might just get a, a cgi trailer to wet appetites hopefully they show something more than a cgi trailer if they show the game but something's better than nothing i guess in this case you know xbox fans need need a win so we'll see in addition to gears of war 6 whispers in gaming community hint at a possible gears of war collection in the works however no concrete evidence has surfaced to confirm these claims yeah i wouldn't be surprised if there is some kind of gears of war collection in the works kind of like what they did with halo i think we'll get something similar but we had to wait and see on that i would assume that collection will come before gear 6 does release though for sure but yeah hopefully we do get some info about gears of war 6 and this collection the xbox showcase should show off a lot of games or reveal a lot of games i know they're hinting at something big from call of duty as well being shown there so there's no telling what we'll see at this xbox june 9th showcase hopefully we see fable there that's what i'm hoping for speaking of gears of war we did have a member of the discord right in mentioning it gears of war I had a little question don't forget you all can submit questions and topics to the show as well through the discord instagram twitter email patreon youtube wherever you can leave a comment or send a message submit your questions and topics so white ranger tc asks over in the discord how do i feel about the possibility of gears of war 6 coming to playstation i mean it's possible going back to 
like when the Xbox made the announcement of putting games on other platforms and now we got PlayStation potentially putting Hell Divers on Xbox. I feel like anything's possible going forward in gaming. So I wouldn't count it out until it doesn't happen. You know, there are there were mentions of other games that Xbox wanted to put on PlayStation, but we only got those four announced. So who knows what the true plan for Xbox is? I think they should put their games on there. <laughs> But I also think PlayStation should put their games on Xbox. I think everybody's game should be on every platform as many as they can get it on. I could definitely see Gear 6 on the PlayStation platform if Xbox finds a way to put Game Pass on everything. Like, I feel like that's their true plan. Give us Game Pass on every console, computer, laptop, anything that they can put it on. I feel like Game Pass is the thing there they're trying to push. More so than just getting a game here and there onto a platform you know they know they could succeed a lot more if they can just get game pass on there and they can push out all the game so yeah let me know down below in the comments how you guys are feeling about gears of war 6 are you optimistic for this release are you looking forward to it what about that collection is that something you're interested in and also do you think gears of war 6 could make it to a playstation platform in the future God, this was a really crazy story as somebody that has played call of duty throughout <laughs> throughout time and understand what kind of skill goes in just to get in the kill i think the only thing harder than that is to be successful in the game without getting any kills somehow this call of duty player pilgore one has managed to reach 10th prestige without getting any kills at all which is crazy and this isn't the first time they've done it they've done it in previous titles before i think they've done this in what modern warfare 3 if i'm not mistaken but they've done it in previous games as well Pil Gore said they was able to accomplish this by mostly playing hard point and domination, you know, objective based modes instead of worrying about getting the kills like you would in like team deathmatch or whatever. And shooting down everything and spamming UAV and counter UAVs all match. They follow up with a ride shield primary and an LMG or a storm render. Storm ender for shooting down kill streaks, along with decoy grenades and the DDOS field upgrade for easy points to help get score streaks. And they said they reached 10th prestige so fast by playing small map, mosh pit, and taking advantage of double XP. Could you imagine doing all this without getting any kills and how heartbroken you would be to randomly get a kill? I think in the article, he also said there were times where he accidentally hit a player, and but they didn't die. And like hitting them with a decoy grenade and they took damage, but didn't die, so. I'd be heartbroken to see that happen. You know, you get so high and then you accidentally get one kill off something you wasn't even trying to kill a person with. That would, that would be terrible. I'm sure that's happened multiple times for him. But shout out to Peel Gore one. No kills, pacifist run <laughs> through Call of Duty, which is wild. That is crazy. More power to him. Interesting time to be a Tomb Raider fan. You know, not too long ago, we got the, the re-release of the the first three Tomb Raider games on what it was the Switch. Then I think this month we got some Tomb Raider games put onto Game Pass. Now we have some details about a possible new game in the Tomb Raider series. It seems Laura's next expedition would take her to the vibrant landscapes of India. But that's not all. According to recent claims by V Scooper, a Twitter user known for their accurate scoops, this installment will break new ground as a fully open world experience. That could be interesting, open world Tomb Raider. For some reason, I was thinking the the newer games in the series were open world, but I guess they're more linear. I haven't played them, but I guess they're more linear. Not a fully open world experience. Vast scenario scratching as far as the eye can see with no boundaries to constrain or interpret, explore. And if that isn't thrilling enough, players will have the freedom to traverse this expensive world using not only Lore's traditional skills, but also exciting new methods of transportation. Let me see, they said you could use like a motorcycle, parachute, I guess maybe like paraglide or something like that. Or maybe they got you in a wingsuit. You know, that's a big thing against some games. According to the V Scooper, more information about this groundbreaking game is set to emerge soon. So keep your eyes peeled for updates and while they hinted at a potential release date within the next year, we'll have to wait and see if any unforeseen delays alter our course. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I would love to see a new game in the Tomb Raider series. I haven't played Tomb Raider since probably the PS1, honestly. And then I think I tried out the, 
the little spinoff game they had on like the PS4 for free at one point when you, you play with like the, the four p people. It's kind of like Diablo or whatever. I gave that a try out my little brother. It was all right. But yeah, not the biggest Tomb Raider fan, but interested to see what they do with the series. Hopefully this rumor is true and the game is great. I think we could see it at a Summer's Game Fest or some one of these conferences in the summer that coming up soon. Definitely a place where we could see it revealed, if not there, towards the end of the year, I would guess. But if it is releasing soon, I would assume we're going to get a look at it or some kind of details about it over the summer. How you guys feel about a new Tomb Raider game and it being open world? Let me know down below in the comments. I don't know if the open worldness would help or hurt Tomb Raider in general. I guess I guess you could give it a try since no other games in the series have been open world. I guess it's a way to spice it up, you know, a good way to spice it up. This was kind of a surprise for me. Not too long ago, uh, I had seen that X Defiant was having a server test. And then after the server test was done, it was announced, basically announced that it will be released on PC and consoles on May 21st. This is a game I thought we would not be getting so soon. I think it was supposed to have been out before then anyway. I think it got delayed to May 21st. But it is just another instance of Ubisoft sticking with games throughout through to release for better or for worse. I think it has a good chance to do okay just because it's free to play. But yeah, don't get me wrong, you know. Like I said, the prospect of a new free to play game from Ubisoft is certainly exciting. But after the server stress test in April, some of us are approaching the launch with a hint of caution. According to the latest news, X Defiant would kick off with a preseason, giving players six weeks to dive into the action before season one arrives around July 2nd. It's a promising start, but will it be enough to iron out any potential kinks? As far as content, we're looking at a roster of factions, maps, and game modes that offer plenty of variety. From the gritty streets of Liberty to the neon lit chaos of Times Square, there's no shortage of battlegrounds to explore. That is the one thing about X Defiant that piques my interest. The fact that it's just a mashup of different <laughs> different properties they own, you know, whether you're playing with the different characters from different games or you're playing on different maps from different games, I do think that is appealing. But none of that matters if the gameplay is not good, in my opinion. They even released the roadmap for year one. With promises of new factions, weapons, and maps every season, there's certainly a lot to look forward to with this game, but will Ubisoft be able to del deliver on these ambitious plans? Like I said, it to me, it comes down to, will you just find the game fun? Like I said, they have a good chance just because it's being free to play. It's using different IPs that they have that people already like. So it's just a matter of if it would be fun and if it can find that player base. It has a lot of potential. Could be a good alternate for, for people, but we have to wait and see. Is X to find a game you guys will be checking out on this release? When was that? May 21st? Let me know down below. I've seen this and I thought it was pretty interesting i'm sure fallout fans and resident evil fans can appreciate this a modder took like hella mods to turn fallout 4 into resident evil 5 what would make you want to do this or what would pop into your head to be like you know what i'm going to turn fallout 4 into resident evil 5 is a i don't know what will make you think that but i'm glad this person had that thought because it is pretty cool i don't know if you've seen the video or not but there are some videos of him showing off the mod <laughs> and the games look pretty good in my opinion i would have never guessed this was a fallout 4 off a quick glance i don't know if i would have thought it was resident evil 5 at first look either if i didn't know what resident evil 5 was but i feel like the mods do it justice and this is pretty cool and stuff like this would be the reason why old games will keep going forever the community mods and stuff like that gives new life to games all the time of course by the fallout right now and then you have resident evil that's always popular you know these two franchises definitely benefit from mods a lot but yeah just wanted to mention that story and shout out that mod for their dedication and their achievement all right before we close out this week's episode we want to take a moment and highlight the comment left by Flotus143 over on the Spotify section of the podcast. Wow, what an incredible, wholesome podcast. My kids and I love listening while we're driving to school. Are you excited for the Paper Mario remake as we are? Stay hydrated, gamers. God bless. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the Paper Mario remake. I know there's already some, some bad stuff going on with it. 
with the what it is the frame rates people are kind of upset about the frame frame rate for the game changing since a lot of stuff in the game is kind of time based and if you're basing it on the original game you know the frame rate is not the same from the original game so it can kind of throw people off i can see that but other than that i am looking forward to the paper mario remake i don't know if i'm gonna get it myself when it first comes out but i do want to play it at some point maybe i just have to go back and play the original <laughs> but i am looking forward to it i'm definitely going to watch some folks play it on twitch so if you're going to stream this on twitch let me know and i'll come through and check that out for sure and thanks flotus143 for the comment and the rating over on spotify and that wraps up today's episode of the on the sticks podcast i hope you enjoyed our deep dive into the gaming universe remember this podcast is all about our shared love of gaming so don't forget to send in your thoughts questions and ideas for future episodes before i sign off a huge thank you to all our listeners your support means the world and i can't wait to continue this journey with you i'm your host sticks signing off until next time keep those controllers charged your games updated and most importantly keep on gaming